Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we're getting started with Cyprus with Node.js. And then the first thing we gotta do, let me show you. You just need to download Node.js. And if you already did that, you're just fine. You can go to just Node.js.org download. And you can see there are different versions and stuff like that. You can get 32, 64, depending on your machine. And the recommended one is Node 14, and that works with Cypress. Because Cypress documentation says 12, Node 12 or 14 or up. But we'll check that again. You just download whichever one that you have, or if you have uh, other operating systems. So. Now, let me show you the Cypress documentation. Let's search Cypress docs. docs.cypress. And click getting started. Installing Cypress. And now it says if you're using Mac OS or Linux or Windows or Node.js, you see 12 or 14 or above. Now, depending on the operating system or if you're using docker but we're using node.js so we're just going to start from here install doing uh, first we have to create our folder i already did that actually not did that but let me show you like i created a folder inside drive c which is like cypress projects and i'm going to Create, I created this manually, but I'm going to create another one using the shell. And let's open the shell. Just to get that done using make directory. Okay, now we're going to go with PowerShell, but you can use your shell, whichever one that you're going with. All right. There it is. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Point like thirty six. Hopefully this is good for you. Over here, let's just go back. You can do dot dot. It goes one directory back, one folder back. But we don't have to do that. You can just say drive C like that. We can directly go back and now we're gonna cd into cypress projects this is the one i created and if you look at inside there's nothing so right now we're gonna add something in here using make there and let's say project 101 or let's say Cypress project. Let's put underscore in between. That's a pretty long name. You don't have to do this. I'm just making this up. Now we have our project. I wish we made it shorter because you're going to CD into that one. Let's say, dang it, <laughs> no problem. Let's just do that project. 101 now you can use this shell to do exactly the same steps that we can do inside our visual studio and we're going to open the project which is this folder inside our shell so let's just click open folder and it's going to be inside drive c and we have cypress projects and Cypress 101. This is the one we just created. So select this folder. Now the very first thing we got to do, we can also do open this terminal here and search up. It's actually the same thing. Do you see this directory C drive 101 folder? It's the very same thing we have here. I 
think this is more bigger in my case so I'm just gonna use it here so what do we do here we're just gonna first uh, if you looked at the documentation, it says make sure you run, you already run npm init. You can do it afterwards or before, it doesn't really matter. And for that, we're going to start with npm init. Let's just do that. What does it do? It will create a package JSON file. Alright, so you're going to see that. Uh, and we can give it a name. So test one one let's say and you can press enter to let it get the default value entry point uh, usually we put app.js but we haven't created that, that just yet but we can still put it now if you don't put it it's gonna take whatever first uh, Stuff that you have it's going to take it as entry point and if you have a git repo you can put it there but i'm just going to make it blank you can add keywords and there are ways you can add the author and then the license for example you can go with mit and now the very same thing like whenever you're working on the project this is the thing right i want to add to my projects right so there is a command line, command for this one you can do it and every time you create your npm in it where is it at is it somewhere well that's too what far out so uh, then every time you created it it's going to automatically insert this for you and i'll show you that in the next video just stay tuned and let's just say yes here. Now let's take a look at our folder. Cypress Project 101. Do you see the package.json added? So that's perfect. And we're gonna navigate to our project. You can see package.json right here. It has the exact same thing that we saw. Now let's also make this bigger. There we go for that. Our font size over here. Let's make it six. Let's see if it's good. Okay, that's perfect. Now, now, what we're gonna do next? Uh, before we get into any more detail, let me show you inside the documentation. Uh, we gotta do this: install Cypress to our local branch. All right. So I just took that. And you can do it here like I told you because we're already inside this 101 folder. Well, let's continue with this one because we have the stuff right here. So let's paste that thing. Didn't I just copy it? It always does this. <laughs> That's just not right. Okay, we're going to take a few seconds or minutes depending on your machine. And during this time, let me walk you through the next step. And you see the best practice. It says use npm with the Cypress, but you can use yarn also if you install it. Or if you like direct download, you can do that. And we're going to go to opening Cypress as soon as it's finished. Let's check it out. And it's still going on, so we're going to give it another minute. And then here, I'm going to use Cypress Open using MPX. But you can also use a longer version or without the shortcut. So let's just go and check your version of MPM. We, uh, You've been working on this recently, you should have something version 12 or up anyways. But we can also, let's, not this one. let's open another window. 
Okay, that right here. So this is the other one. And we have, let's check the other one. Now, one way to understand if something is not going all right, you can see we got our node modules, but we still don't have Cypress. It should show up right here, Cypress folder. Okay, and we're gonna come back here why it didn't do what it didn't do. Uh, you can see this one right here. But uh, let's take a look at our node if it is installed correctly using this one. And all you have to do, I'm sure you've seen it, check. It's pretty standard. And you say hyphen hyphen and type version. There you go. And if you're wondering how I end up with version 15, I installed node uh, through command line. That's one. Okay, so I'm just going to minimize this one. Let's try the same code right here that we had npm install cypress. Let's see if it returns us the same problem that we had. Now you can see package.lockjson added. All right, now I added MPX Cypress open already. So you can see it says, this is your first time using Cypress, right? And probably we're gonna see Cypress folder right after doing this. So it, it was expecting us to open it and it's doing what it's doing. I'm sure you guys heard this in so many other videos how in the production environments you don't take this node modules because it's kind of like large humongous size as told and i'm going to fast forward because i don't know how long it's going to take depending on the system that we have see you on the other side all right it looks like it opened us the test runner right here yeah, we can click ok and now you can see here some examples right here and did you notice we also got the cypress folder right here we got fixtures integration plugins and support and now let's take a look at integrations and you can see examples are right located here we're not interested in examples right now But we're gonna add ourselves another folder right here. Inside, let's go to Cypress, not this one. You can exile on this one. Now, here let's open CD into Cypress. All right, if you do ls, you're going to see integration. Let's open integration. We're going to open integration. Or you can just use the file system to navigate there. Inside integration, let's add another directory. Let's say make there. Let's say my tests. All right, now we did this so we can minimize it now. Let's open integration. You're going to see we have examples. We also have my test now. Now inside the my test, we're going to add a sample file. So we can use the command line or you can just create a new file. And let's say test 101.spec.com. Now you see where I end up js, so let's edit this rename. Um, 
Okay, that's going to be right here. Now, we're going to do our first test. So it's going to be super easy, and then we're going to finish our first video. And you can see it inside the documentation that we start with describe block. And it takes two parameters. The first one, you write about your test, and let's say first test. And then the next one is empty parameter, and we're gonna use arrow sign using ES6 here. You can also use function here instead of this. You can just type function and then go from there. But let's go with this one. And we're going to add its block, which is also not. What is this? Dang autocomplete. Okay, now it takes also two parameters, sort of. And you write whatever, what about, this is your test case. My first test case. Let's write it like that so you can see. My first test case. 101. And then we're going to also use arrow here and add your curly brace and then press enter. And now inside of here, it tells you if you, how do you figure out how to do your first test, right? So you're going to say Cypress first test. And the first link. If you go here and scroll down, it tells create your file. And then it does exactly what we did. And inside here, it's just doing comparison. Right? We can take this one. And then that's it. So true against true, it's gonna return true, right? So this assertion is a simple one. So let's open our test runner, close examples, and see your test 101. Let's open that. I'm just gonna bring it over to the other side. And it's right here. And as you can see, it says there is no tests found. Okay, let's take a look at that. Now I'm going to close this. And let's go to File. And let's click Save All. And also go and enable Autosave. All right, because that's the, that's the main problem that we had, I think. Let's run the rerun the test 101 now you can see we got assertion pass all right let, let's close and then if you look at the documentation it tells you what else you can do about this which is learning about cy which is the object of the cypress globally enabled everywhere you run your test and this autocorrect really bugs me and then the first one is to get to websites is how you can do cy.visit and you're gonna visit let's say let's open google and let's go back to our test runner and then rerun Let's see if it's going to do what we ask it to do. And there you go. Now, in the next video, we're going to search up some stuff here inside Google. Or we're going to click, I'm feeling lucky, I'm feeling funny, to make it more meaningful as we go forward. All right? All right, now that's pretty much all. I'm just going to do a recap. I'm closing this. So this is our test.
test runner let's keep it open and this is our describe it block that we used for our first test and you can add more than one test inside your describe block or your context blocks or your custom blocks and here if you copy this again let's take this one actually it's already here let's just change this one to false so this assertion will fail right and instead of google let's go to not js page let's download page oh well and let's rerun our test so as you can see you can add multiple it blocks which is it's gonna be let's say 102 and this is gonna be second and let's go to our test runner and if you run your test okay we got to google and because we failed on the assertion right here because checking false against true it cannot open node website make sense and let's do this before we end up right here let's just put this up and then try again let's see if it's going to visit node.js website as well run the test Okay, Google. And now you can see it didn't visit the node website. It's again failed right here in the assertion. But you're gonna wonder now why did we not get another website open? That's a question to our next video. But check this out. You also try the same thing and see why it doesn't do what we really wanted to do we just wanted to visit two websites right we wanted to see a download page for example and i keep saying last and last let's just uh, comment out this assertion and let's eliminate one more possibility all right and then we're gonna end this session and there you go and our second website is also achieved and you can see you can play with your code and see what's happening but this is your case and you can understand whenever you have some assertions going on it's important that you log them out all right we're gonna learn about callback functions so if something were to happen you can learn with your callback functions and that will be all for this video thanks for watching until next time hopefully you guys find this helpful